time is 816. Good morning, everybody. Happy 4th of July. And looking outside, your temperatures aren't too bad to start off the day, and it won't be a total washout. 59 in West Babylon, 62 in Shirley this morning, and 66 in Bayville on this Thursday. Suffolk County Police are continuing their efforts to cur curtail illegal fireworks sales on this holiday. Police seized $3,000 worth of fireworks from a Patchog home last night. Also seized were cable television descramblers and illegal drugs. A husband and wife face a number of charges. And the ambulances are rolling again in Hampton Bays. The town of Southampton says local ambulance service was restored after a temporary agreement was reached between the American Legion and the local volunteer ambulance corps. The American Legion shut the volunteers out of their garage when talks on a volunteer buyout of the American Legion-owned garage fell through. Well, the two sides are now working on a permanent resolution. Terms of the temporary agreement are not known. It is 8.17, time to check the roads for you this morning, and really no delays out there to tell you about. Uh, looking at the Infor map, we see everything is green, meaning traffic is moving at the speed limit. The only light zones are areas where the sensors are not picking up any data, but we don't have any reports of any delays, even in those zones. And taking a look at one of our traffic eyes, we'll see what traffic looks like on the expressway in Hop Hog at exit 57. Westbound traffic is moving along to the right, and the volume is absolutely nil out there this morning. 18 minutes after 8 o'clock is our time right now. The LIRR is running on their holiday weekend schedule. No problems there. And Sally Ann Mosey has a pretty optimistic view about today's <laughs> forecast. Sally Ann? I should because I got to look at the traffic and not only was it moving well, but there was some sunshine peeking through all those clouds and uh, the sun is going to set at 827 tonight. That means we're going to lose just a minute of daylight. Normal temperatures for you, 81, 64. We're going to barely reach it up to the normal temperature, and we're not even close to the record. 95, 1949, 44, 1962. The early morning temperatures are in the 60s for the most part, kind of muggy. 66, Shelter Island, 61 in Noyak, 62 over in Islip, and over at LaGuardia, it was 68, 61 Oceanside, and 65 New High Park. Satellite picture shows all the clouds that are moving our way. They're going to stay with us, and uh, clouds peeking in with some sunshine. This is what it looks like now on the radar. Nothing for us, but Last night, some of the shower activity moved off to our east. They had some severe thunderstorms in parts, but no major damage to report. We have, though, some uh, clear skies, and not clear, I should say, no scattered showers in the forecast, but there are some cloudy skies, and it looks like uh, we are gonna see some sun today. There's just a slight chance of a shower. In fact, I'm not even going to emphasize that because we do have an easterly flow of some cooler air, we're not going to heat up as much as once anticipated, so that means it's going to be between 75 and 80, and the shower activity doesn't look too promising. That's the good news. Cloudy for tonight on the muggy side. If you're going out to see any fireworks, uh, keep in mind that the winds will be out of the east at 5 to 10 miles an hour, and it's going to be kind of muggy between 65 and 70 because humid air is certainly moving our way. It's going to be one of those humid gray days tomorrow we're barely going to see the sun like we will today. We'll see much more sun today than tomorrow. Humid day, a few scattered showers here and there between 77 and 82 degrees. Now, for the weekend forecast, Saturday is looking pretty good. It calls for sunshine and the high temperatures in the mid 80s. We're gonna warm up to close to 90 on Sunday. And then as we get to Monday, well, we're gonna drop in humidity, but then again, we're gonna drop as far as the sunshine goes with less sun on Sunday. But overall, not a bad forecast at all. We'll be back with more of news, sports, and weather, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Is Wallbaum such a popular place to shop? Big savings every week. Save on first or center cut chuck steaks, now just $1.19 a pound. Wallbaum's burger or frank rolls, 39 cents an eight pack. All canned Pepsi, $4.99 a suitcase. Any Ruffles potato chips, now 69 cents. Now going on the grand opening of our Oceanside Superstore. That's why we say one supermarket is better than the rest. Wallbaum's, come share our values. Critics say it's another case of an order of protection failing to work. 31-year-old Elvin Hernandez of Bellport was arraigned yesterday, charged with kidnapping a Bellport woman and holding her captive for 30 hours. Police say Hernandez assaulted the same woman in May. He held uh, this same female victim against her will in a wooded area. Uh, 
and when she wouldn't submit to his wishes at that time, he, he assaulted her uh, with his uh, fists. Uh, as a result of that, he did 45 days in Suffolk County Jail. Police say after the first assault, the woman was granted the order of protection. The Coalition Against Domestic Violence says violations of such orders happen all the time. There's no response yet from the state on a request to reopen the investigation into the murder of 13-year-old Kelly Antinius of Valley Stream. The request was made by the girl's father. Richard Tinius is convinced that more than one person was involved in the sexual mutilation and murder of his daughter. The only suspect charged in her death was a neighbor, Robert Golub, who is now serving a 25-year-to-life jail term. Robert's younger brother, John Jay, was originally named by police as a second suspect, but was never charged. Richard Tinia says the DA and police dropped the ball. They needed a conviction on this case. The media attention was too much. And if they didn't get a conviction, there would have been a lot of problems. Tinius says he has an expert, a state police medical examiner, who agrees the murder could have been committed by more than one person. The Nassau District Attorney's Office and police won't comment on the request to reopen the investigation. An Island Park couple has been granted a court order to have the remains of their dog exhumed from the Long Island Pet Cemetery. Joyce Walp and Michael Backman want to find out if their sheepdog was actually buried there. Now, if the animal isn't buried there, they plan to file a lawsuit against the cemetery. The owners of the pet cemetery have been charged with dumping, no, dumping 250,000 pets into mass graves. No date is set for the exhumation. Now for some stories we're watching for you around the world and across the, across the nation this morning. Nerves apparently are frayed in the breakaway Republic of Slovenia, but officials say a ceasefire with the Yugoslav army appears to be holding. The federal presidency will meet in emergency session today to try to end the bloodshed. And in the nation's capital last night, the men who led Operation Desert Storm, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Colin Powell and General Norman Schwarzkopf, were awarded the Medal of Freedom. The honor is awarded to Americans who have made extraordinary contributions to the security of the United States or world peace. And from Washington to out in the Black Hills of South Dakota, President Bush got a head start on the 4th of July holiday yesterday by attending the star-spangled official dedication of Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore celebrated its 50th anniversary with a gala birthday party. Bush says the nation should rededicate itself to the ideals espoused by the four presidents honored at the famous memorial. And on this 4th of July, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev has sent a special message to President Bush, wishing the American people prosperity and peace. Gorbachev says in his message that Soviet-American cooperation is important for both countries and the world. Bush and Gorbachev are scheduled to meet later this month in London. The 4th of July is here, and Long Islanders are getting ready for a day of picnics, parties, and patriotism. But the celebrating began last night with a big fireworks display over Mitchell Field in Uniondale. were among the sponsors. And what a show it was. Yes. Sally and Mosey will be here next to tell us if this 4th of July holiday weekend will be something to celebrate. And we'll tell you how Ranger goalie John Van Beesbrook is teeing off to help leukemia. News 12 Long Island is brought to you in part by PC Richard & Son, Long Island's electronics and appliance giant. At PC Richard. GC Richard is the place for GE appliances, quality GE refrigerators, reliable GE washers, dishwashers, and microwaves, dependable GE ranges available in gas and electric. Never pay interest again with a PC Richard credit card. See stores for details. For GE home appliances, come to PC Richard & Son, the appliance and electronics giant. 
Turning to sports now, royalty was attempting a takeover at Wimbledon yesterday. After celebrating her 30th birthday just days ago, Princess Di was on hand to watch another princess defeat the queen of tennis. Jennifer Capriati beat Martina Navratilova in every aspect of the game. In fact, she even got lucky at times. The ninth seeded Capriati down the nine-time Wimbledon champ in straight sets while reaching her first Wimbledon semifinals. Capriati will have her hands full again today when she meets second seeded Gabriella Sabatini. And Christian Bergstrom threw everything he had at Boris Becker yesterday, even headbutting the ball at times. Becker retaliated, however, eventually putting Bergstrom away in a four set conquest. In today's action, number one seed Steffi Graf will take on fifth seeded Mary Jo Fernandez. And in the men's action, America will celebrate its birthday at Wimbledon with a quarterfinal match between U.S. stars Andre Agassi and David Wheaton. Long Island Sporting Life has always done its best to help charities. And on August 3rd, New York Ranger goalie John Van Beesburg will tee off in a driving competition against other Long Island golfers in a tournament to help benefit leukemia. I'm an eight handicap, and uh, I mean, I get out about three times a week, and it, it's fun for me. It's good therapy. Good therapy for hockey playing. Yeah, it is. Usually I'm stopping things. This gives me a chance to hit something, so uh, I vent off all my frustrations. If any golfer beats the pro who has an eight handicap, they will be eligible to compete in a tournament at the Forsgate Country Club in New Jersey later this month. Well, coming up next, Sally and Mosey is back at the map, and she has some high hopes for today's forecast. We'll have that, plus a look at the top news stories. Stay tuned. system installed in this Lamborghini can be installed in your car at American Soundcraft. At American Soundcraft, we design a custom installation around your needs, the unit, and the aesthetic quality of your car. Our reputation is built on technical perfection and authorized dealer service. Everything we sell, we guarantee to service. Whether it's a stereo, security system, or car phone, we stand behind it. So drop by for a consultation and see our complete line of accessories. On sale now, Motorola Backbone, just $149. Country and traditional styles with a contemporary approach. Exquisite living spaces, so originally conceived they stir the imagination. So affordably priced, it boggles the mind. The designers at Lane Gallery have orchestrated room ensembles too dramatic to describe in a 30-second commercial. They must be seen up close. Experienced. Lane Gallery, Route 110 Farmingdale. Come, appreciate the fine art of affordable furniture. I remember when we first moved to Long Island, the first friends we made were at the Roslyn Savings Bank. We didn't have much, but they made us feel like we did. Today, the Roslyn Savings Bank continues its dedication to Long Islanders with special services like free checking, available to any depositor who maintains a $300 minimum balance in a savings account. And now our grandchildren bank at Roslyn. Some traditions are worth keeping. The Roslyn Savings Bank is one of them. The Roslyn Savings Bank, member FDIC. This is News 12, Long Island. From Montauk in the east to Great Neck in the west, news about Long Island for the people of Long Island. 24 hours every day. This is News 12, Long Island. And now, the morning edition. 
Good morning once again, everybody. Our time is 8.31. For those of you just getting up late, good morning, everybody. 61 in Oceanside, 66 in Bayville, 61 in Noyak on this Thursday, July 4th. And the state legislature is working on this holiday toward the end of its session this morning. Legislative leaders agreed on budget bills last night, adding almost $700 million in spending to the budget. The budget will keep Robert Moses State Park open this summer. And legislators also agreed on a compromise budget cut of about $400 million in aid to education. Those cuts most likely mean fewer teachers, fewer special programs, and fewer athletic opportunities in the coming school year. And the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration has given $1.3 million to the Port Washington Police as a reward for its role in a big drug bust. Last October, Port Washington Police helped seize $13.7 million from alleged members of the Cali drug cartel. It's 8.32. Let's check the roadways for you this morning. No problems out there. We'll take a look at the informed system map first. And we see green just about everywhere. We do have a bit of a red zone there popping up on the eastbound side of the LIE in Queens. So we'll check on that to find out if that's any serious accident that's causing that tie-ups. But there is no volume on the roadways. As you can see, everything is clear. And taking a look at one of our traffic guys, we'll give you a pretty good idea of how the roads look this morning. Westbound traffic here on the expressway in Hop Hog at exit 57 is clear and moving with no problems to tell you about. It is 8.32. The trains are looking good. They're operating on their weekend holiday schedule today. And Sally Ann Mosey on this holiday has a look at a pretty nice forecast for us. You know, it doesn't look too bad out there this morning. It doesn't. I mean, all I have to say about that is thank goodness that fronts stall. What is she saying? I'll tell you in just a minute. In the meantime, let's take a look at the radar satellite combination here. You could see there were some scattered showers around the country and mainly off to our southeast. They had uh, quite a few showers and some light, some heavy. They were scattered for the most part, but for us, We've had sunshine this morning, you wouldn't believe. Just a few clouds in the area, and that's because of a low pressure system that's slowly moving in and a high pressure system that's off to our north. Let me show you it. It's right up to our north, and what it's doing is ushering in some cooler air out of the east. Now, that cool air is having a little struggle with this warm front. They're competing over who's going to uh, take over the territory. And right now, thank goodness, that high pressure is winning because that's why we see some of that sunshine. And with the easterly flow of cool air, we're not going to have that heating that was anticipated, that heating which would help that warm front move in and bring in some humid, moist air. Right now, though, it looks like that humid, moist air isn't going to be with us until sometime tomorrow. There is a slight chance that in the evening a scattered shower may be moving through, but right now it looks like uh, it's just a slight chance and mostly sunny skies will prevail. A few clouds here and there. The biggest thing to know today is that the temperature is not going to be all that warm. I mean, it'll be fine if you're not going out to the beach or uh, somewhere along the shore. Along the shore it's going to be a little bit cooler. It's going to be a struggle just to get to the 80 degree range. The marine forecast shapes up like this. The winds will be out of the east at about 10 to 15 knots. It's going to be choppy out on the uh, waters. On the ocean about two to four foot waves and on the sound about one to three feet. So not the best of conditions to be water skiing or anything like that. But uh, kind of hazy visibility wise because a thunderstorm or two uh, is, it was anticipated earlier. Actually it won't be all that bad. So scratch this visibility as hazy and make it good for the most part. Water temperature will be real nice. It'll be up near 70. So the forecast for today, flip-flop these sun and clouds. I like it better that way. It looks like we're going to have more sun than clouds right now. Just that slight chance of uh, rain moving in. It's almost not even worth mentioning. Between 75 and 80 degrees today, it's going to be in just the mid-70s. That is lower than normal temperature. Now for tonight, well, the clouds are going to stay with us. That's for certain. And muggy temperatures are going to be moving in as that low front approaches, that warm front rather, and that low pressure system. The winds are going to be out of the east at 5 to 10 miles an hour. And keep in mind if you're going to the fireworks display, it won't be a bad idea just to bring the umbrella because there is that slight possibility. Main thing is though that uh, keep in mind the winds will be out of the east, so you want to be on the west end. So any of the leftover from the sky showers will uh, not fall over your way. It'll be about 65 to 70 degrees, so kind of on the muggy side for tonight. As far as tomorrow goes, well, tomorrow won't be as nice as today. It's going to be humid, a few scattered showers between 77 and 82, but the forecast for the weekend shapes up real nicely with Saturday, partly sunny skies and up around 80 degrees. Same goes for Sunday, not a bad day. There is a chance of a scattered shower on Sunday in the high about 80. We're going to be back with more news, sports, and weather right after this.
Okay, some are staring you straight in the face. What do you think of? All right, that's cool. But do you know what summer makes me think of? That's right, air conditioners. The Wiz has the top brands, the highest efficiencies, and incredible, nobody beats the Wiz prices. You're hot? Get cool. For air conditioners this summer, nobody beats the Wiz. When you decide to install a pool, you only have one chance to get it done right. That's why choosing Done Right Pools makes the difference. Family owned and operated for over 23 years, Done Right Pools is Long Island's largest in-ground builder, featuring affordable luxury in a wide variety of styles and sizes. And Done Right's pool pros always guarantee fast installation and prompt reliable service. You can only do it once, so get it done right. Call 800-6-DONE-RIGHT today. Done Right Pools, we make staying home the best part of summer. It took 94 days, but the budget battle being fought between Governor Cuomo and the legislature seems to finally have come to an end. The agreement early this morning adds almost $700 million in spending to the budget. And while the deal repeals the petroleum tax levied three days ago, the wealthy earning more than $100,000 a year will see an income tax. The, but the plan is not without its casualties. The state labor force faces a 10% reduction, except for state troopers. And the state school systems lose about $400 million in aid. Governor Cuomo says local schools will just have to do some trimming back. They had a meeting on a Friday night in Northport and gave six superintendents raises while they were saying, you're not giving us enough money. But what did we do about it? Nothing. We didn't even mention it in the legislature. Now that has to, we need to come back to these subjects. And the legislature passed the half-cent sales tax for both Nassau and Suffolk counties. Suffolk residents will now have to pay an 8% tax at the register, while residents in Nassau County will see an 8.5% tax added on to their purchases, making this the highest sales tax in New York State. A mandate relief package is also now in place. Both the Assembly and Senate passed the measure yesterday. It's expected to save local municipalities $274 million this year. But county and city government officials say the proposal doesn't go far enough to cut mounting costs imposed on local governments by the state. And while the state's budget impasse has finally reached a settlement, the whopping education cuts mean the state's children may suffer. The compromise agreement in Albany cuts about $400 million in aid to schools. And even though this new version is not as bad as the $900 million cut proposed by Governor Cuomo in his original budget, the Nassau Suffolk School Board Association says the cuts still run deep matter what our peers and the rest of the state of New York think, we are not wealthy on Long Island and this is going to hurt the children. But there is some good news coming from Albany today. The new budget agreement calls for $3.3 million to be added to the State Parks Department Fund. This means Long Island's Robert Moses State Park escapes a shutdown and higher park fees. Well, Suffolk County employees are fuming over their mail. One letter from county lawmakers in particular. Now, the letter is from count two county employees is to accept a 10-day lag payroll plan to save money or face future layoffs and furloughs. The lag payroll is part of the county's effort to close a $150 million budget deficit. Now, the county says it would save Suffolk about $12 million. The workers would receive their money any time after six years or when they leave their county jobs. The union vote will be counted on July 16th. In a case of use it or lose it, both Nassau and Suffolk counties have been told they're in danger of losing AIDS grant money because they haven't spent it. The money is supposed to be used to hire medical personnel and social workers at county AIDS clinics, but no one's been hired. The State AIDS Institute says given that we're in the middle of an HIV epidemic, that's unconscionable. Suffolk says it hasn't hired anyone because its own fiscal problems have made recruiting difficult. Similarly, similarly, Nassau County says fiscal constraints at the state and local level have kept it from hiring anyone. So far, the state hasn't set a deadline by which Nassau and Suffolk must either spend the money or lose it altogether. 
And while both counties face the loss of money to help fight AIDS, both are getting money to fight the war on drugs. In Hopog yesterday, Senator Alphonse D'Amato gave Suffolk County a check for $200,000. It's the first installment of a federal grant for the purchase of state-of-the-art drug surveillance equipment. The Island Park Republican says replacing the outdated equipment now used by the Suffolk DA's office will give county officials a needed edge in the war on drugs. Nassau County will also be getting money that from New York's high-intensity drug trafficking area program. How much, though, has not been determined. Money to fight drugs is also flowing to police in Port Washington. The Port Washington Police Department received a $1.3 million check from the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration for its help in breaking up the Cali drug cartel. Last October, police say the money will enable them to go after more alleged drug dealers. It enables jurisdictions such as mine and much larger ones such as New York State and New York State to take the money these people have obtained illegally and turn around and use it against them. Some of the money will also be used for drug prevention efforts in Port Washington schools. Coming up, Sally Ann Mosey will let us know if we'll be able to spend America's birthday outdoors. And both New York teams went out with a bang last night. The Mets kept on rolling against the Montreal Expos. And the Red Hot Yanks did the victory dance against the Cleveland Indians. We'll have highlights coming up. On the track, and that ball is... And Pat Kelly made a fine play on it. The IKEA once a year sale is going on now. And that means that the low prices will be even lower to make room for new 1992 merchandise. So if you need home furnishings, now is the perfect time to come in for savings up to 50% on selected items throughout the entire store. And if you miss it, well, you'll have to live with that for the rest of your life. Joe Cook here for 8 Auto Stores. If you're planning a road trip this summer, you'll want to get your car in shape before you go. And you'll find great savings on all your automotive needs in the 4th of July circular sale. Like Quaker State Motor Oil, just 94 cents a quart after rebate with purchase of 12. Slick 50, engine wear protector, 1999. Reduce friction on your engine and improve your fuel economy. Or this heavy duty two and a quarter ton hydraulic service jack. At 49.99, it's our lowest price ever. Eight Thanks. Guess what? The Mets have done it again in Montreal last night. The Expos were limited to just two hits off Ron Darling and Alejandro Pena. 4-0 was the final. The Mets have won three in a row. Montreal has dropped 10 straight. If you wonder why the Expos are losing like crazy, check out the signs by their third base coach. Very unusual. Top first, Howard Johnson does it again. He is going to the All-Star game. Two run homer to left field, his 19th, and it makes it 2 0. And Ron Darling on his way to his fifth win of the season after getting smashed last time. He now ups his record to 5 and 5. The Mets win again. I'm Mike Zimmett, News 12 Sports. Tonight, the Mets go for their second consecutive sweep of Montreal. And the Yankees got the broom out and swept the Cleveland Indians right out of town. The Bronx Bombers starting things off with a bang. Leading off the first inning, Steve Sachs knocks one over the left center field wall. The Yankees carried a 3-0 lead to the seventh, but the Indians came back with two solo home runs, including a mammoth blast to center off the bat of Albert Bell. But that was it. The Yanks held on for the 3-2 win, giving them a three-game sweep of the Tribe. The Yanks have now won five straight. Coming up, we'll have weather and all the top stories. But first, we'll leave you with a look at the starting lineups for next week's Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Birds Only of Mineola has the largest selection of tropical birds from cockatoos to macaws to parrots and more. Right now, save 25 to 30 percent on all our sensational birds and cages. These tame, exotic, tropical birds are raised on open perches and hand-fed, so they're sure to make lovable pets. For Birds Only has a full selection of cages, seed, books, and more. Save 25 to 30 percent on all birds and cages right now at For Birds Only on Jericho Turnpike in Mineola. Bye-bye. Bank for people, people like you. 
Stop in at your nearest Union Savings Branch and discover why, for all the days of nearly 100 years, we've been Long Island's community bank. Union Savings Bank. Charles Binder from the law firm of Binder & Binder. I think it's the quality of care that we give to our clients that makes us different from most of the firms. And we do anything concerning the elderly and the disabled. That is our field that we practice in. It's not merely Social Security, it's all the areas around disability and disabled people. We're very well known, and the reason we're well known is because we have been successful. And the clients have not only been satisfied with what we've done for them, but satisfied in the way we've treated them. Binder and Binder, call today for a free consultation. Hi, I'm Gary Arcieri, president of Elegant Entries, New York's oldest and largest insulated steel door manufacturer, with another helpful home improvement tip. Make sure that the company selling the product is the same company that manufactures it and the same company that installs, guarantees, and services it. That's the only way to really protect your investment. After 25 years in business and over 100,000 satisfied customers, Elegant Entries knows how to do the job right. First time, every time. And don't forget to check this Thursday's Newsday for spectacular savings. Good morning once again, everybody. Our time is 847 and temperatures in the 60s. They'll get up to about the high 70s today and you should see some sunshine according to Sally Ann Mosey. 61 degrees in Oceanside, 62 in Shirley, 61 in Noyak on this Thursday, the 4th of July. And Suffolk County Police are continuing their efforts to curtail illegal fireworks sales on this holiday. Police seized $3,000 worth of fireworks from a Patchogue home last night. Also seized were cable television descramblers and illegal drugs. A husband and wife face a number of charges. At 847, let's take one last look at the roads for you this, this morning, and we'll start first with the inform map. And uh, that uh, red zone around Main Street on the eastbound side of the LIE in Queens has cleared up. Uh, police told us before it was just a momentary spurt of volume, no serious delays. Uh, Northern State Parkway LIE absolutely clear from beginning to end. Everything is looking very good. And taking a look at our traffic eye now, we'll give you a pretty good indication of how the roadways look. This is the expressway at exit 37 Willis Avenue in Roslyn. Westbound traffic is heading towards us. Eastbound traffic is beginning to just get a little bit heavier this morning, but by no means any delays. 8.48 is the time. The LIE IRR is working on their holiday weekend schedule and everything is fine there as well. Sally and Mosey has a lot of uh, pretty good news for this 4th of July to tell you about. We can tell you the weather is going to look a lot better today than she thought it would yesterday. Sally Ann? That's true, and that's because of a stationary front. That's the good news. In fact, just took a look outside. Plenty of sunshine this morning. It looks like we're going to see more sun throughout the day. It will eventually set, though. Always does. 827, it will be setting. That means we're going to lose just a minute of daylight. So if you're doing any fireworks, best time would be close to 9 o'clock. Give it some time to set and for it to get a little bit darker. That's the best contrast to see some wonderful fireworks. Normal temperatures about 81 and 64. Records 95 in 1949, 44 in 1962. We're not even close to the records, but we're close to the normal. Waking up this morning in Noyak, 61 degrees, 66 Shelter Island, 62 over in Islip, over at LaGuardia, 68, 61 Oceanside, and 65 in New Hyde Park. The humidity is up there at 85 percent, and the humidity is going to continue to rise. We're taking a look at the satellite picture, and there's some cloud cover that's with us and you can see that there's a, a low pressure system and a front a warm front that is moving our way this is what the radar screen looks like now nothing for us there were some scattered shower activities last night that's last night's view as it moved off to the east now we're talking about some sunshine for us today so the forecast shapes up pretty nicely. Sun and clouds, slight chance of rain, hardly even emphasizing that between 75 and 80. For tonight, a bit on the muggy side, slight chance of rain. Cloudy with the winds out of the east at about 5 to 10 miles an hour and it'll be muggy as I mentioned between 65 and 70 and then for tomorrow looks like uh, sun will be at a minimal, mostly humid with scattered showers between 77 and 82. We'll be back with more right after this. Why buy just any van when you can get exactly what you want with an Island Luxury Van? Your Island Luxury Van is custom built right here on Long Island in your choice of color and options with a six-year conversion warranty. We're Long Island's only custom van manufacturer, selling directly to the public. For sales, rentals, conversions, parts, and accessories, Island Luxury Vans, working harder to be your number one family van center. Island Luxury Van. say 
it's another case of an order of protection failing to work. 31-year-old Elvin Hernandez of Bellport was arraigned yesterday, charged with kidnapping a Bellport woman and holding her captive for 30 hours. Police say Hernandez assaulted the same woman in May. He held uh, this same female victim against her will in a wooded area. Uh, and when she wouldn't submit to his wishes at that time, he, he assaulted her uh, with his uh, fists. Uh, as a result of that, he did 45 days in Suffolk County Jail. Police say after the first assault, the woman was granted the order of protection. The Coalition Against Domestic Violence says violations of such orders happen all the time. There's no response yet from the state on a request to reopen the investigation into the murder of 13-year-old Kelly Antinius of Valley Stream. The request was made by the girl's father. Richard Tinius is convinced that more than one person was involved in the sexual mutilation and murder of his daughter. The only suspect charged in her death was a neighbor, Robert Golub, who is now serving a 25-year-to-life jail term. Robert's younger brother, John Jay, was originally named by police as a second suspect, but was never charged. Richard Tinius says the DA and police dropped the ball. They needed a conviction on this case. The media attention was too much. And if they didn't get a conviction, there would have been a lot of problems. Tinius says he has an expert, a state police medical examiner, who agrees the murder could have been committed by more than one person. The Nassau District Attorney's Office and police won't comment on the request to reopen the investigation. An Island Park couple has been granted a court order to have the remains of their dog exhumed from the Long Island Pet Cemetery. Joyce Walp and Michael Backman want to find out if their sheepdog was actually buried there. Now, if the animal isn't buried there, they plan to file a lawsuit against the cemetery. The owners of the Pet Cemetery have been charged with dumping, no, dumping 250,000 pets into mass graves. No date is set for the exhumation. Now for some stories we're watching for you around the world and across the, across the nation this morning. Nerves apparently are frayed in the breakaway Republic of Slovenia, but officials say a ceasefire with the Yugoslav army appears to be holding. The federal presidency will meet in emergency session today to try to end the bloodshed. And in the nation's capital last night, the men who led Operation Desert Storm, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Colin Powell and General Norman Schwarzkopf, were awarded the Medal of Freedom. The honor is awarded to Americans who have made extraordinary contributions to the security of the United States or world peace. And from Washington to out in the Black Hills of South Dakota, President Bush got a head start on the 4th of July holiday yesterday by attending the star-spangled official dedication of Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore celebrated its 50th anniversary with a gala birthday party. Bush says the nation should rededicate itself to the ideals espoused by the four presidents honored at the famous memorial. And on this 4th of July, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev has sent a special message to President Bush, wishing the American people prosperity and peace. Gorbachev says in his message that Soviet-American cooperation is important for both countries and the world. Bush and Gorbachev are scheduled to meet later this month in London. The 4th of July is here, and Long Islanders are getting ready for a day of picnics, parties, and patriotism. But the celebrating began last night with a big fireworks display over Mitchell Field in Uniondale. were among the sponsors. And what a show it was. Yes. Sally and Mosey will be here next to tell us if this 4th of July holiday weekend will be something to celebrate. And we'll tell you how Ranger goalie John Van Beesbrook is teeing off to help leukemia. Only at Tom Rice Buick, you get the Tom Rice price. Buick in Huntington. 
Turning to sports now, royalty was attempting a takeover at Wimbledon yesterday. After celebrating her 30th birthday just days ago, Princess Di was on hand to watch another princess defeat the queen of tennis. Jennifer Capriati beat Martina Navratilova in every aspect of the game. In fact, she even got lucky at times. The ninth-seeded Capriati down the nine-time Wimbledon champ in straight sets while reaching her first Wimbledon semifinals. Capriati will have her hands full again today when she meets second-seeded Gabriella Sabatini. And Christian Bergstrom threw everything he had at Boris Becker yesterday, even headbutting the ball at times. Becker retaliated, however, eventually putting Bergstrom away in a four-set conquest. In today's action, number one seed Steffi Graf will take on fifth-seeded Mary Jo Fernandez. And in the men's action, America will celebrate its birthday at Wimbledon with a quarterfinal match between U.S. stars Andre Agassi and David Wheaton. Long Island Sporting Life has always done its best to help charities. And on August 3rd, New York Ranger goalie John Van Beesburg will tee off in a driving competition against other Long Island golfers in a tournament to help benefit leukemia. I'm an eight handicap, and uh, I mean, I get out about three times a week, and it, it's fun for me. It's good therapy. Good therapy for hockey playing. Yeah, it is. Usually I'm stopping things. This gives me a chance to hit something, so uh, I vent off all my frustrations. If any golfer beats the pro who has an eight handicap, they will be eligible to compete in a tournament at the Forsgate Country Club in New Jersey later this month. Well, coming up next, Sally and Mosey is back at the map, and she has some high hopes for today's forecast. We'll have that, plus a look at the top news stories. Stay tuned.